Hello everybody and welcome back. We're going to continue with Let's Defend.io, but we're going to do something a little bit different with this one. So recently, Let's Defend rolled out four different quizzes. In order to uh, earn yourself extra points, you can go through and knock these things out. So they cover SEAM, Detection, Malware Analysis, and Investigation. And I figured I'll go through and try to puzzle out the uh, SEAM quiz and see how this shakes out. Um, I am going into this with no foreknowledge, uh, just short of what's in my head. And hopefully when I'm able to sit there and look up in a secondary window, just in case. <laughs> uh... I mean, I don't see anything in there that lays out that, you know, you should just rely on what's inside your head. I mean, everybody ends up with Google at some point or another to sit there and work on investigations or try to get answers to questions. So, oh, go ahead and plug in my keyboard. Okay. Let's see about trying to tackle the seam. Okay, question one, which is not the log collection method? By USB drive, agentless, by agents, by scripts. Well, especially with Windows platform, you could always have a script that would sit there, export your Windows event log, and shunt it over. Uh, you could have agents. Uh, and I suppose you could do the same thing with a USB drive. So I'm going to say agentless. We'll see as to how we do on this. Just out of matter of curiosity. Okay, just 10 questions. So we'll see how bad we do on this or how good we do on this. Question two Which one is not the cons of agentless log collection? Oh, okay. Well. I'm going to change it to the USB drive. <laughs> Use a test to take a test. Okay, which one is that the cons of agentless? Hmm. That? Well, I mean, if it's agentless... I'm going to say it's going to be difficult to monitor the agent health. I mean, if there's no agent, it's kind of difficult to mi monitor this agent's health if it's agentless. Maximum packet size that can be sent with syslog UDP. All right, that one will go to the uh, maximum packet size. That can be sent with syslog UDP. If I had to guess, I'm going to say 512. But we'll see as to what uh, UDP syslog messages should not exceed 1024. Oh, that's for Q radar. Should not. But if we take a look, Palo Alto says the maximum size for individual me messages is 2,048 bits, or bytes. Must contain a single packet, a single packet, blah, 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 blah. Okay, well, we're going to say 2,048 bytes. Which one is not the skill? Not the skill of a log aggregator. Okay, Q4, which is not the skill of a log aggregator. Well, not something that a log aggregator would do. Um, so it's going to do filtering, it's going to do parsing, and it'll probably be... Analysis or enrichment. 
Uh, enrichment from other portions. I'm going to say analysis. Uh, you're using the hash value of Mimi Cat Study exceed a blacklist. How can an attacker bypass it? Well, so if it's hash, it's going to be the let's see, because what next command of MV is move, right? Yeah, so moving it so it shows up as a different name would not affect the hash. CP would then be copy, so you're basically copying mimikatz to slash mim.exe. That's not going to do anything because the hash hasn't changed. It's to actually go through and make an adjustment. I'm going to say it's going to be the last one, because if I remember correctly, if you do an echo with the double arrow, it is to append. So you would append 1 to the end of mimikatz.exe, changing the file contents. Select. Whitelist, so you're only allowing what will run. They're highly effective, but difficult to manage. Especially as Microsoft patches everything on a monthly basis. Uh, your applications get random updates. Of course, realistically, with like whitelisting, depending as to who the vendor is, you can do it by the actual company or vendor in order to sit there and cut down on trying to actually manually perform whitelisting, but why indexing is important for storage technology. Uh, indexing would basically kind of group everything together, be able to find something so fast to access the data. Which one is correct about long tail analysis? Hmm. Oh. oh, okay. So that would be an approach that looks for very weak signals from attackers who are technologically savvy enough to stay under the radar. So kind of taking like a big broad look which correct most common events are useful least common events are least well most common events I would say would not be useful I'm gonna say least common events are most useful because you're looking for something to stand out Select correlation about brute force attack. Fifteen failed logins in one minute. Since it's supposed to be repeated attacks. So new user added. That would be more of what lateral movement? Uh, successful login from another country, that would be more GOIP, nothing to do with brute force, and two successful logins via SSH, well, those are, they're successful, there's nothing, no mention of any sort of failure, so okay, feel pretty good about number nine. Okay, number ten, 
which one which is one of the features you should pay attention to when storing log pay attention to when storing log editing log search speed deleting data when you're storing a log well, I guess it really depends I mean realistically if you're gonna search this stuff then I would say search speed but if you're worried about you know the integrity of the when you're storing logs it would be editing if you're worried about the availability it would be deleting <laughs> so just on the general portion trying not to overthink we'll just say search speed and okay let's see how bad I did Well, that's not bad. Eight out of ten correct if we're shooting in the dark. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, one time that Q radar is actually right. <laughs> that was in 24. Oh, now I actually want to go into that drag this through try to figure out exactly where this would be denoted oh, okay yeah never mind take a look at the community page for Splunk a UDP syslog message by protocol definition cannot be over 1024 bytes although this is often ignored oh, good to know <laughs> So I said difficult to monitor. If I changed my yeah, okay. Well, I'm not gonna look it in the mouth. I mean Hey. And then they give a suggested reading. Off the uh let's defend blog. Okay, so I guess at this particular point it may not hurt to go through and take a look at the let's defend blog to research subject before you end up taking the quiz. So I've got those opened on separate windows or tabs and I'll go back through and take a look. So what does that do? Interesting, so we go back. So the question is, okay, if I tell it to kick off again, do we get the same? Oh, okay. Just gives us the results. There was thinking maybe we get another 10 questions to try to run through, but So is these the one? I'll have to go back. As to whether or not if the X denotes the answer I gave that was wrong and the green indicates the correct answer, which would make sense because Palo Alto's documentation I just briefly skimmed said 2048. Okay, well, regardless. So there we go. There's a dry run of the Let's Defend seam quiz um if you go through it i would be interested to find out as to whether or not if you got the same questions uh more as to whether or not if you got different questions hmm. let me know in the comments i'll see you guys next video